Hi, everyone. My name is Ian Goodale. I am the European Studies Librarian at the University of Texas at Austin. And today I will be presenting on a project I did highlighting the work of the Soviet scientist Grunya Sukareva. My project is called Discovering Sukareva and takes the form of a website that uses minimal computing practices to highlight Grunya's work and life. So this is what I'll talk about today. I'll go through Sukareva's background a little bit, talk about why I chose to create this site, uh, go through how accessibility and minimal computing practices were put into practice while creating the site, and then I'll do a live demo of what the website looks like. So who was Gruny Sukareva? She was the first psychiatrist to pathologize autism spectrum disorder, also known as ASD, um, but until very recently has often been overlooked in the literature, highlighting the history of ASD and how it's been diagnosed and uh, treated by the medical community over time. She worked in the Soviet Union from 1915 until her death in 1981, and her observations very closely mirrored the pathology of autism as described by the DSM-5, which is the current version of the DSM Diagnostic Manual. Uh, her first article on autism was published in Russian in 1925, and a German translation soon followed. So why did I create this site? Uh, I wanted to bring attention to Sukareva's work. Uh, I think her contributions are immense and have not received the acknowledgement and, and the respect they deserve in the literature. I also think her work is very important, not only in terms of understanding the history of autism and how it's been pathologized throughout history, um, but toward a greater understanding of neurodiversity, um, both historically and how that applies to the present day. I also wanted to create free and easy to access copies of her research on autism, both in the original languages they were published in and through automatic computational translation. To that end, I have both OCR PDFs of her original articles on my website as well as translations into English to make them more broadly accessible. I also wanted to create an accessible introduction to how the medical community has seen autism throughout history and provide a greater historical context for her research and why it's so important. In creating the site, I strove to incorporate principles of accessibility and minimal computing into both the site architecture and its design. The resources on the site are multilingual, so they are available both in their original languages and in translation into English. The technical aspects of the site are intentionally very simple. Um, it's just very straightforward HTML, CSS, and minimal JavaScript uh, to keep use of resources to a minimum and to keep the site very accessible and easy to access for people regardless of their uh, computational resources. The PDFs available on the site are all OCR'd, so the full text uh, is available to download, copy, or use with screen readers. And the machine translations are provided as uh, simple text translations. Um, they are imperfect uh, since they were produced via computational means, but they are copyright free. And I do link to copyrighted, uh, perhaps more polished translations into English performed by humans as well. And now I'll show a live demo of the site and walk through a few of its features for you. So this is what the site looks like. As you can see, it's hosted through my GitHub account. The source code is freely available for people to view and edit or copy as they see fit. Um, and all of the code is available under the GNU general public license, which is a very permissive copyleft license as well. When designing the site, I chose to make it as accessible as I could for people who use screen readers or who have vision impairments. Um, so I made sure that all of the contrast in the colors I chose for the text and the links on the side um, was very accessible. So in addition to uh, a brief bibliography where I have resources both about Sukareva herself and about the history of autism and neurodiversity uh, more generally, um, which is complemented by my uh, selection of open online resources, which forms another part of the bibliography. The main content of the site is Sukareva's writings on autism and the timeline I created for the site. The page on Sukareva's writings on autism uh, includes both the original text and the computational translations I mentioned earlier, um, as well as links to the copyrighted uh, translations performed by humans. So if you click these links here, um, you can see each article opens up. This is the PDF of her first article in Russian from 1925. Um, as I mentioned before, the text is completely OCR'd, so that can be copied and manipulated um, by users. And all of these articles are completely copyright free. Um, they are in the public domain, so they can be downloaded um, and worked with as people would like. Here we have the computer translation of that first article. This is embedded via Google Docs. 
And you'll notice the text is intentionally left sort of in its raw state. Um, I wanted people to understand that this was not a very polished translation. Um, it was performed by a computer. Um, and it really exists primarily to just increase the base accessibility of the site and make the content of that article as open as possible to people who do not speak Russian and perhaps don't have access to the translations uh, performed by humans of those articles as those are behind a paywall. Here we have her German article um, as well from 1926, which is the translation of that first uh, Russian article. We have the translation of that one underneath. And then we also have another article that she wrote from 1927, also uh, addressing autism in children. Here on the timeline page, we have a brief outline of her life and her work, as well as the way her life and work fits into uh, the context of the history of autism and how it has been looked at by the medical community throughout history. So we have some simple facts about her life when she was born, the first use of the term autism in 1908, and then some more facts about her life, where she worked, um, when she first published her articles on autism, when they were translated to German. And then we also have a, a way to contextualize her work within that history of autism by looking at when uh, Leo Connor, another famous uh, researcher of autism in children, published his first article in 1943, so much later than Sukareva's work. Um, on the next slide, I have some information about when the DSM-3 was published in 1980. Um, just as, this was the first time that infantile autism appeared as a diagnosis separate from schizophrenia in the DSM. And then I have a brief slide to conclude the timeline as well. Thank you very much for your time and attention.